Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you to the 330 to go high school football show coaches segment. I am Mike Voorhees. Today, we have the absolute honor and pleasure to interview the Alliance Aviators head football coach and athletic director, Tim Goodman. Coach, welcome to the program. Yeah, thanks for having me. Appreciate you guys taking the time to talk about aviator football today. Absolutely. We love our high school football, especially those in the 330. Coach, where do we begin? What a season you had last year. The Aviators finished second in the EBC with an eight and three record. You were four and one in the conference. Your only loss came to the eventual division winning West Branch Warriors, but you played them awful hard uh, when the Warriors escaped with a 42 to 35 win. And then unfortunately the season ends with a loss uh, in the first round of the playoffs to Cheney. Coach, can you talk a little bit about last year? What was some, like, what were some of the bright spots uh, from the aviators from last year. Yeah, I think overall as a program, I think just, you know, the year prior, we didn't have kind of the year that we wanted. Um, and then we just really kind of, that was my first year. So going to my second year, really trying to get kind of my program, my culture put in place. And the, the reason we were able to turn around is because the kids a hundred percent bought in. And when that bought in buy-in happened, um, the results kind of followed from there. So, I mean, obviously yeah, the bright spots for us, we finished with a really good record, eight and three. Uh, we were able to qualify for the playoffs um, we had a lot of individual accolades as well. I think we ended up with four uh, all Ohio kids, um, a lot of EBC, all EBC kids, a lot of for, uh, all district kids. Um, sent about four or five kids on to play college football. Um, so those are the things that we're really proud of, and then just hoping to continue to build on that going into this season. I mean, obviously your offense really stepped up its game uh, compared to the 2021. Uh, last year, you guys averaged 40 points a game. Uh, up from the 27 that you guys averaged in 2021. You talk about your team buying in. What were some of the big successes uh, for you guys with your offense? Yeah, I think just going from year one to year two, um, the kids understanding the offense a little bit more, um, you know, understanding why I'm calling, what I'm calling. Um, I think just that kind of overall football IQ. And then beyond that, we, you know, we just got a lot stronger in the weight room. Um, we executed at a high level. And then when you have, you know, great playmakers like Brendan Zerberg and Caden Davis and Ramir Hawkins and, and the guys up front blocking for them, uh, it makes my job as a play caller easy. Uh, so, yeah, going for 40 points a game. And, and we, we were fortunate enough to set the school record for most points in the season, most points per game. Um, but, again, I know our guys coming back are, are hungry to break that record again. I mean, obviously, it looks like you read my notes. We're talking about offensive weapons. I mean, soon to be Oklahoma Sooner quarterback, Brandon Zerberg, your tailback, Caden Davis, and Ramir Hawkins at wide receiver. All three had a sensational season, both individually, collectively. I mean, what's it like when you have those types of playmakers on offense? That's got to make your job so much easier. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. It's don't overcomplicate it. You know, people always say football's not a tough game. Just get it to your playmakers in space and let them go to work. And that's kind of what we do. And uh, you know, we try and create a selfless team. Um, and I, I think we do a great job of that. Like I was like, like last year, Brandon could have thrown for four thousand yards but Caden had to get his crushing and Caden could have ran for 2000, but Brennan had to, you know, and our, our kids understand that. And then the, the other receivers understand, Hey, they're going to block for their buddies. Cause you know, it puts the folks on a guy like Ramir and then it opens them up. So creating a selfless team like that. And then just, you know, making sure we're putting our kids in the best position to succeed as coaches. I mean, obviously getting the opportunity to watch these guys play, you know, obviously from a, uh, a play by play or a color commentators perspective, but for a coach's perspective, I mean, these kids are very talented and being able to watch them do what they do each and every Friday night under the lights in front of the fans. I mean, just the sights, the sounds, everything of high school football. I mean, it's got to be fun when you're on the sideline and you see these guys, you're watching them not only succeed in practice, you su they're succeeding in the weight room, on the field and even in the classroom. I mean, as a coach. Kind of, uh, what's that feeling like when you, these are kind of like your kids, right? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I mean, it's just, it's just you're, you're you're unbelievably proud when you see things like that because you know the Friday nights are when it's fun and that's when everybody puts on a show, but that's just a very, very, very small glimpse. You know, football is kind of unique uh, to most sports because you end up practicing more when you play. I think Coach Herm Edwards had a great talk about that one time. You practice way more, you spend way more time in the weight room than you actually play. You only get to play ten games. And they're only one day a week. 
Um, right. So all that other stuff that you alluded to, the weight room, the classroom, uh, the, the two-a-days, all that stuff. And then just, you know, we do a lot of talks where we we talk about culture, we talk about leadership, we bring in former um, coaches and players. And and when you see that kind of behavior, um, it, you, you just beam with pride as a coach because you're like, man, they're starting to get it. And you start to see that, how it's going to set them up for success later in life. Well, we talked about your offense for the Aviators. Let's talk about your defense a little bit. They stepped their game up last year as well. You had Carter Bugara, who led the team with six interceptions. You know, Aiden Mosden and Jackson Eddy led the team with four sacks. And your team's leading tackler, I saw this, and it, it I couldn't believe the number. Adam Zumbar with 122 tackles. I mean, ta let's talk about your defense for a little bit. What are some of the things that you look for for a defensive player for the uh, Alliance Aviators? Yeah, the biggest thing we want our kids is to understand, you know, their, their role in a team defense, again, being selfless, understanding you got to do your 111th. You know, Belichick always says, do your job. And we want our kids to understand that. But then other than that, you know, we just want maximum effort. We want guys flying to the football. And then defensively, I mean, the name of the game is defensively. You got to get guys on the ground. So we want good tacklers on defense. And you said a guy like Adam Zumbar right under 22 tackles. I think Jackson, he was right there with him, like about 115, 116. Um, so, you know, we had guys, and Carter Baguera led the county in interceptions. I think he had six interceptions last year. Yep. So we had guys flying to the football last year, and that was great to see. Um, again, we're fortunate enough to have a, a good amount of those guys coming back, so we're excited about our defense this year as well. Well, we're excited for the 2023 uh, high school football season. Obviously, you will travel to Uniontown Lake to take on the Lake Blue Streaks, a team that unfortunately beat you guys in Week 10 last year. Looking a little bit ahead to that game, what is one goal that you have for your aviators heading into the season? Yeah, Lake's a tough, tough opponent. I mean, it's we don't open up with a gimme. Um, so we know we got our hands full. You know, Lake is on a great run right now. They won the Federal League last year. I think they're one of the favorites to win it again this year. They got a great group of kids coming through. Um, you know, they got 86 kids, 10 through 12. I got 40, 10 through 12. So <laughs> there's a little bit of a difference there, but you know, we're, we're excited to open up with them because we know they're a quality football team. Um, you know, I think the biggest thing that we're really trying to emphasize to our kids this year is playing four quarters of football um, and giving ourselves a chance. Cause I think Latin, the last couple of years, we play them tight for about a half to three quarters and then their kind of depth kind of pulls away from us and, and they're able to kind of pull away at the end of the game. So we want to play four quarters of football and give everything we got for four quarters and hopefully give ourselves a chance to pull it out in the end. Well, later on today, we'll have the opportunity to talk to Lake head football coach Dan DeGeorge. I won't let him know that you said that they're favored to win the federal league. We don't want to, we don't want to tip our hand at yeah. anything, but yeah. we, we do know that Lake has a fantastic football program. Uh, this year, a little different for Lake. They're going to have a running back by committee after their senior workhorse running back, Matt Solberger, graduated. So let's talk about the Aviators defense a little bit. How do you stop a running attack when you don't necessarily know who the lead back is going to be? Yeah, well, the, I mean, so I coached at North Kent before I came to line. So I've been I've been coaching against Lake my entire career. And the one thing about Lake is they're always going to have a physical running game. And they might not have a feature back as of right now. They usually do have one that emerges. So I'm sure they will. But <laughs> even if they don't, it starts with the guys up front. They have a very good offensive line coming back. They have an Air Force commit at left tackle. has been a three-year starter for them. So we know no matter who's getting the rock, we got to take care of up front first and, you know, hold the line of scrimmage. So that's going to be our goal defensively we got to win the line of scrimmage, you know, each and every rep. And there's going to be times where we don't, and that's just football. You don't win the, that play, come back and play the next play. But I've always said, you know, whether you're successful offensively or defensively, you got to win the line of scrimmage. We know Lake last year ran a two quarterback system that was very successful for them. Uh, fortunate for you, one of those quarterbacks has graduated. So now it looks as if Lake will run a one quarterback system on the defensive side. Does that make your job easier when you only have to worry about one quarterback as opposed to two? Um, yes and no. I think, you know, both those quarterbacks last year, both did an extremely great job in their roles. Um, so I think with, with the one quarterback system, you kind of get a better idea of exactly what play style they're going to be running with that quarterback. But he's another year older. He's another year stronger. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they kind of use him the same way that they used uh, Will Butler last year. Um, so, I mean, it, yes and no that they only have one quarterback this year, but that one quarterback's pretty dang good. Uh, so we know we have to be prepared for that. And that will be Kale Jarvis, uh, a name I'm sure that we will hear all season long for Lake. But now here's a fun question for you. We know that Lake has weapons on both sides of the ball. Let's talk about your offensive game plan going against a team like Lake. They're fast up front. They get to the quarterback. They had, I, I, I believe I read 26 takeaways last year on defense. 
So what's the message to the offense when you go ahead and play Lake uh, on Friday night? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is going to be for us is confidence. Be confident in ourselves and our abilities. You know, we like I said, we have a lot of guys back from our offense last year that had a lot of success. Um, offensively last year, we moved the ball pretty well against them, but we just didn't finish in the end zone. So that's the biggest thing. we got to finish our drives in the end zone so that way we keep putting pressure on them. Um, you know, they, they do a great job defensively. Like I said, Coach Ron Viscount is their defensive coordinator, and he's done a phenomenal job with their defense. We know they're going to be fast, aggressive, and physical. We just got to make sure we match that aggressiveness um, when we play them on Friday. So, Coach, would you rather prefer an offensive shootout or a defensive battle, which comes down to a last-second field goal? I got to know. <laughs> Man, <laughs> both those sound miserable. You know, every, it's, great for, <laughs> it's great for the viewers. I know we always joke as coaches and my, my staff and when we talk to other coaches, everyone loves either one. Games that come down to the wire, everyone loves. As head coaches, we love the blowouts. We love when there's it's over. And <laughs> You know, for us, we're, we're going to take either one. As long as we got a chance to win the game at the end, that's all we can ask. We got a lot of confidence in both guys on both sides of the ball for us. Um, so we'll take either one as long as we got a chance to win at the end. I agree 100%. Both of those seem like a phenomenal choice. If I get to watch a football game, to call it is is even more fun. But yeah, I imagine that's pretty aggravating for the coaches and the staff trying to figure out exactly, okay, what do we do next? We got to make sure this works. We got to keep tabs with them you know, punch for punch, blow for blow type deal. Uh, it's, I'm going to ask every coach that question this year. Just, yeah. I want to get an idea. I think I have a feeling the answers are going to be similar to yours, but just curious all around. Now we know that you finished second in the EBC last year. West Branch kind of ran away with it a little bit. What would be the definition of a successful season for you guys this year? I think just, you know, kind of, like I said earlier, is just improving upon what we did last year. Um, so we had a really good season last year, but we fell short of a couple of goals. Um, so being able to kind of take that next step as a program would be a great season for us, as you alluded to, you know, kind of came up about, I think, 30 seconds short of an EBC title. Um, so that's something that we're chasing after this year. Um, but the biggest thing for us, we got to take it one week at a time and keep improving week in and week out. Um, and then I think we'll like where we're going to be at come week 10, 11, 12 and so forth. That's I love to hear that. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, the 3 3 to go high school football show here with Alliance Aviators, head football coach and athletic director. So now the title's a little longer, yeah. but Coach Tim Goodman taking time out at, uh, right before we start the high school football season uh, one week from tomorrow, Friday night in Uniontown. They will take on the Lake Blue Streaks. Coach, again, I just want to thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule meeting with us, talking with us, getting us excited about the Alliance Aviator program. Coach, we're looking forward to a fantastic season. We know the EBC has a ton of talent and, and wonderful players, teams that we get to watch all season. We're very excited, and hopefully we will get to talk to you again very soon. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate you guys having me on. Appreciate all the coverage you do for high school sports. Not a problem. We're happy to do it. We love the 3-3-0, and we love our high school football once again, Mike Voorhees signing off. We're excited about the high school football season again, Friday night. Our game of the week, the Alliance Aviators versus the Lake Blue Streaks. More to come. Stay tuned. We'll talk to you next time. Thanks, everybody.